Flat Earth Theory confirmed. Well, I doubt it, but okay, how exactly have you managed to confirm something which is scientifically impossible? If you even gonna be able to digest this, you have to delete all of the programming that the, that your elementary school done put in you, like Columbus found America, and we live on a globe, and... All right, I get it. Now you're basically saying that your mind-blowing revolution requires people to erase their entire memory and become empty-headed like a goldfish on a permanent vacation. So your profound insights are exclusively reserved for those who missed out on education and have a PhD in cluelessness? Please subscribe. They sent to the moon. You gotta get all of that out your head. I can see what you're doing here. Yeah? Your video is a masterpiece designed exclusively Exclusively for the elite community of brainless wonderland enthusiasts where thinking independently is as rare as a unicorn sliding down a rainbow and I must say within the first 20 seconds you've managed to embody the essence of a flat earth believing moon landing denying moron so you can just like think logically Leave the sarcasm to me if you don't mind. <laughs> and like really be able to, to process what's going on. Like, oh, you're being serious. I could not tell. That may be my fault though. I've made videos about so many different flat earthers. It might be my ability to process your nonsense that needs looking at. So if we live on a spinning ball, Calling Earth's rotation a spin might not be the most scientifically precise way to put it though, but we do live on one. And let me tell you, Earth is no ordinary ball, it's more like a colossal behemoth that could make even the most hardcore gym buff blush with envy. Seriously, we're talking extra, extra large on the cosmic size chart. How fast do the Earth spin? Uh, what are you doing? You're googling how fast does the Earth spin? Why? You're a flat earther. You're not going to believe what the results tell you anyway. We're zooming along at high speed like a roller coaster without the loops and the screaming. It's like a cosmic racetrack where we're all just hanging on for dear life while trying to maintain our balance. Is what every flat earther thinks. But as I said earlier, Earth is pretty big and miles per hour is not the best unit of measurement to use for Earth's rotation. But when you take into account the fact that the Earth is 7,917.5 miles in diameter, that breakneck speed translates to one rotation every 24 hours. This, this is the globe. This is the, supposedly, this is the while we live on. This mug is spinning in a spiral, like in a circle. A thousand miles an hour, we outside and can't feel it. Ah yes, the perplexing mystery of why we don't feel Earth's rotation. Well, the answer lies in the magic of physics and our incredible ability to adapt. You see, Earth's rotation happens at a steady, consistent pace, completing one full spin every 24 hours. And as we go about our daily lives, we're like passengers on a super smooth intergalactic merry-go-round. Now, here's the trick. Our bodies, including our inner years, and the fluid that's inside our years, shut up and Welsh, have adapted to this cosmic ballet over millions of years. They've become accustomed to the constant motion, making it feel completely normal and unnoticeable. That's, that alone make it impossible for, like, come on, man. I, it's, I don't even want to get lost because I got plenty points to make on, on how for surely the Earth is not a ball. For surely? Oh, that's nice. Anyone know who Shirley is? So what you're saying then is because you can't understand something, that means it doesn't happen. I just realized something. Did this flat earther just let slip they's real name? Now I really need to find out who Shirley is. Because if I'm following his logic, it would seem that this Shirley person might be the one who's trying to hide the true shape of the earth. I am, and don't call me Shirley. And we're not hurtling through space at who God knows how fast to travel around the moon on a floating ball through space. Like it's just... Whenever I hear a flat earther using the words hurtling through space, it makes me think of two things. Ludicrous speed, go! <laughs> These are small, but the ones out there are far away. And what those clips show us is that flat earthers just 
cannot comprehend certain things and because they don't have the ability to comprehend those certain things then they can't possibly be real no not only is the bible telling us that that shit ain't facts but like but like nothing let's clear this up once and for all the bible does not mention the shape of the earth at all and even if it did it still wouldn't make the earth flat because as we all know the bible is not a science book there are so many different ways to demonstrate the shape of the earth it baffles me the flat earthers are even a thing don't get me wrong i'm glad they are you know for obvious reason <laughs> but every single flat earther has something in common they all have to lie to themselves and then scramble around trying to disprove things that have been common knowledge for thousands of years like ships disappearing from the bottom up when they go over the horizon. Y'all having faith in something that you can't even explain. But we can explain it, and we do, over and over again. Just take a look through some of the Flat Earth videos on my channel. But when it comes to scientific observations that quite easily demonstrate the shape of the Earth, Flat Earthers seem to have a really bad case of selective deafness. Now, it's always made me laugh that a lot of these people consider themselves to be truth seekers. Because everything they claim to believe is based on a lie. And not a little white one, like the one you tell your wife when she's asked if you remember to mow the lawn and you tell her that you couldn't because you couldn't find the key to the garage. No, I mean big whopping lies, like uploading content to YouTube, telling people that you can prove the earth is flat. When you can't, because it isn't. It's just nonsense. We wake up every day, we see the sun going around us and the moon going around us. They had it right. Now, I've never seen this guy before today or any of his other videos, but do you think he realizes that the two things he just described only happened because Earth is a globe? Thousands of years ago, the first people was like, oh yeah, the Earth flat, we watching the sun and the moon go around us, like clearly. Oh my word, not this again. Yeah, thousands of years ago, people did think the Earth was flat. But that was because they didn't know it wasn't. I used to think that a fairy put money under my pillow when I lost a tooth. And like the people who thought the Earth was flat thousands of years ago, I learned that there was no fairy. It was just my dad sticking a quid under my pillow. This stuff isn't hard to figure out. Clearly. Whatever they teaching you in school is lies, man. Obviously, I can only speak for the UK educational system, but most people's parents would be pretty upset if they found out that schools were teaching their kids lies. What are you teaching these kids? And not to mention what it would do to the population. Imagine if everyone that went through the school system was like a flat earther. What would our doctors be like? Or our lawyers? They'd all look and sound like extras from Deliverance. <laughs> Okay, so nah, this is this is the sun, right? This is the earth. Not only is the earth spinning in a circle, it's spinning in a circle and going around the eye, right, going around the sun. Alright, cool. Science wise, right? Alright. I wish flat earthers would stop saying spinning. I'm dizzy. It's called an orbit, pal. And Earth does it once a year. Isn't that weird? Earth rotates on its axis once every 24 hours. And strangely enough, that's exactly how long one day is. And wait for it, the Earth orbits the Sun once every 365.25 days, otherwise known as one year. So the flat earthers think it's all just one big coincidence that those numbers line up exactly with what we would expect from an ablate spheroid traveling through space. How the hell, how are we seeing the same stars every day, the same star constellations every day, no matter what? Oh yes, the old cosmic conundrum of why we always see the same stars as Earth travels through space. The answer lies in the vast distances between stars and the incredible scale of the universe. Even though Earth is hurtling through space at mind-boggling speeds, the relative distance to most stars are so incredibly vast that they appear almost fixed in our night sky. Think of it this way. Imagine you're driving down a long highway, speeding along at, I don't know, 80 mile an hour. As you look out the window, the trees and the buildings seem to zip by you really quickly, while distant objects like mountains or whatever, you know, any other landmark seem as if they're stationary. Well, similarly, the stars we see in the night skies are like those distant landmarks. 
they're so far away that their apparent positions don't change significantly as the Earth moves through space. The North Star always, the North Star always in the same spot. How are we even, how, how are, like, how are we not always seeing shooting stars in different galaxies and all this? Like, if we're, if we doing this, we spinning around in a circle. Like, this shit really be blowing me that people could just go for this so easily. Like, And it blows me when a flat earther can't just wrap their heads around size. Not blows me like that. I wish. Yes, we are traveling through space, but space is so huge, it's pretty much impossible for the average person to even picture in their mind's eye just how big it is. The diameter of the Milky Way is around 100,000 light years, and it would take us roughly 588,000 years to go from one side to the other. And that's just our own galaxy, and we would need to be traveling at the speed of light. And what that means is it's big, very big. Cut it out. Have And has anybody seen the, the moon landing? The moon landing from the 60s or the 50s or whenever they went to the moon. Like, come on, dude. So, so we're moving from one ridiculous conspiracy to another. <laughs> Fine by me. No, I didn't see the moon landing in 1969 because I hadn't been born yet. But I have watched so much footage from the moon landing, thanks to other conspiracy theorists, I've lost count. Now before I let you make a fool of yourself, is what you're about to say based on your own observational misunderstandings, or based on the fact that you've seen other conspiracy theorists saying that the moon landings were fake? And of course, they always use CGI. And it's worth pointing out that you all claim CGI that didn't even exist in 1969. Thing. Y'all went to the moon in the 60s with limited technology, showed us that terrible video. It was like this. What'd you expect? It was 1969. We were limited by the technology we had back there. Is that really one of your arguments for why the moon landings didn't happen? The Matrix 1 looked more real than the moon landing. That was clearly fake. It was clearly a movie set. They jumping around. They damn they got strings hanging from their backs while they jumping around. Right, first of all, you do know that The Matrix isn't a documentary, don't you? And secondly, it wasn't released until 1999, 30 years after we went to the moon. I'm not sure I follow your logic here. Ah, right, silly me. How could I possibly follow your logic when you haven't got any? But to put the fake footprint down all it was i think i heard recently or read recently somewhere that it was just a race between the countries to get to the moon so exactly and there you go you just said something that we can use as a reason why the moon landing wasn't fake the race to land on the moon was primarily between two major players the united states of america and the ussr during the Cold War era, these superpowers engaged in a fierce competition known as the Space Race. The United States, with its Apollo program, ultimately achieved the historic feat of landing astronauts on the moon on July 20th, 1969. And you don't think that if NASA had faked the moon landings, the Russians would have been first in line to call them out for faking it. Of course, America captain said they went. Ain't nobody went to the moon, man. Nobody went to the moon because you can't get out of the firmament that we live in. We live in a dome. Bloody hell, it's like this guy has read the dummy's guide to flat earth. Like many other flat earthers I've made video about. <laughs> like many other flat earthers I've made videos about. Okay, the dome. Who put it there? Who looks after it? Why is there zero evidence that there is a dome? I think these are all perfectly reasonable questions that no flat earther has ever even attempted to answer. Now, if I was a cynical man, I would probably have to assume that it's because it's an imaginary barrier that flat earthers have to put there to be able to explain why they think we haven't traveled into space. It's like, you see these buttons, the buttons on this, the buttons on this, cool. That's Earth. This is the flat Earth. Then this microphone thing, I don't even know what this shit for. I don't even use it. This is the atmosphere and the dome. We're under it. We, we, you can't get out. 
You can't get out. And the sun and the moon is going around us like this. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, we've all heard flat earthers trying to explain the dome, but what we have never seen is any sort of evidence for it, like I say. And there's a huge difference. I can claim I got a 10 inch knob, but unless I pull it out and show you, you're not gonna believe me. You, you believe me? <laughs> I wish it was 10 inches instead of this massive thing. Elon Musk hasn't sent anybody to outer space to do anything. Nobody's, nobody has sent anybody to the moon. Uh, sorry, but yes he has, and yes we did. Do you not watch the news but to be fair i can understand why flat earthers are in a mass panic over private companies sending people into space because even now if your wallet is big enough you can do exactly that so i get it i think it's what's known as damage limitation it's all cap you know why nobody's been to the moon because you can't go they in line well why didn't you say if we can't go then fair enough that's all the evidence we need isn't it no you moron so you're just another flat earther that graduated from the university of nah -uh. i think i just found it it's it's hard evidence that white people ain't nobody ain't been to the moon fool because you know if white and you know the first people that would have went they claimed it was white Hmm. Now, I've got to be honest here, I'm not really sure how to respond to that. Yes, the first people to land on the moon were white, but I don't think the color had anything to do with whether we went to the moon or it was fair. And you know, I usually say I can't wait to see where he goes next. Well, this time I'm almost too scared to find out. If they would have went to the moon, they would have been up there grabbing stuff to come back and sell and saying that they own the moon. That's how white people do. Right. Well, I'm not actually sure if somebody can own the moon. But when the Apollo 11 mission successfully landed on the moon in 1969, the astronauts did collect samples of lunar materials and did bring them back to Earth, which is yet another way we can demonstrate that we went to the moon in 1969. And if they told you that in kindergarten, it's probably false. Two plus two barely holding up. Really? Two plus two is barely holding up. But I have to say, that is a pretty telling statement. That does nothing to help your argument. All it does is show us the type of person you are. You're nothing more than a gullible individual who doesn't trust anyone or anything that he's told which he doesn't understand. Otherwise known as a conspiracy theorist. Special Officer Doofy reporting. Thank you to everyone who hit the super thanks button on the last video. Ian Fisk, PhD Tony, Metal Face Hotel, John Osmond, Audrey Leone, Dave Bird, and Martin Berry. You're awesome. Thank you very much indeed for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw today, here's a playlist full of stuff just like this. And I'll see you all in the comments section. Love you, bye. All right, all right, watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe. By order of the creaky blinder.